It's uh, spirit can manipulate things from the other side and it's resonance, it's all resonance. It's hard to really stretch your mind around what, she, what her work is, but it is absolutely authentic, it's real. This woman has no agenda, there's nothing that she's trying to gain out of this other than to help all of us heal from those that we've lost. The work of Sonia Rinaldi brings a new dimension to the study of the afterlife. They blend in with your energy and that's how they can do the work and that's how you get your outcome. That's how she's been able to get some of her magnificent outcomes. So what's happening now is that humankind is advancing, humankind is evolving, and what we're doing is we're evolving intellectually and spiritually. Dark energy and dark matter are 96% of the universe and yet we cannot discern them. What we discern is a light energy which is 4% of the universe. That dark energy that we can't even discern, we can't even measure it, we, we can see it there because of certain ways, things like lensing of light around um, mass, we can see the evidence of the dark energy, but we cannot yet discern it. So 96% of what exists, our physics doesn't even see. And in that 96%, there's lots of room for uh, consciousness survival, uh, there's lots of room for all kinds of things we can't imagine. Our world is made of consciousness, so at the basis of it all is the universal intellect. And the universal intellect is what people would call the source or the higher power or God. And that then is what gives us the world that we live in. But it's not just given to us and we are non-participatory. We are participants in it. We are, have a hand in it. What the, we are making the world the way that it is. And so then the, the kinds of things that we're doing are having an effect upon other people, they're having an effect upon our lives, and they're having an effect upon the world. So as we perform and as we develop and as we learn new things, we are advancing humankind. We're advancing the universal intellect's effort to make something of what we are. Uh, and there is no physical world outside of us. There is nothing outside of us that has these laws that are going to determine what we are independent of us. We are the participants in this great drama. in Brazil, Sonia is making what she describes as phone calls to the deceased. Grieving parents, in particular, from around the world would call Sonia, hoping to connect somehow, some way, with their beloved. They believed Sonia had found a path. In call after call, Sonia would keep her ear on one receiver and says she let those in the afterlife use the other receiver. In the background, Sonia would play audio clips containing sounds of scrambled human voices. Parents were encouraged to talk with their children as if they were alive. This has become her life's work and is a labor of love for Sonia, who has never charged a penny. Sonia Rinaldi's experiments and research to document a path to the afterlife continue to evolve. 
Testimonials from those touched by the experience have been shared around the globe. To many people's surprise and relief, Sonia has reunited them with loved ones lost, those who have passed away and are sorely missed. And now she is doing this not only through voices, but with some highly detailed images. The focus of Sonia's life has been to prove the existence of an afterlife and give hope and comfort to the grieving. She believes that someday this method of communication could become mainstream knowledge and practice. Wherever I go, I take her. Ah, Safira. By the humidifier to enlarge the quantity of vapor that I will be using for recording. Because as I raised it in a nun's school, I knew a little bit of Catholicism, and uh, that wasn't making too much sense for me. All those dogmas and uh, all those stories was not logic for me. I think that. Uh, since then, I was a little bit logical and uh, more uh, for reason than from, for heart. And then I, for the first time, visited a um, spiritist center. And uh, the guy that was the, the leader said that I was meeting and so on. And I was uh, somewhat surprised. But I, I perceived that uh, if that was real, if those things of spirit is of survival, if this could be real, it would change not only my life, but everyone's life. And it would point out that nearly all religions are not saying the truth. And I wondered what, which was the truth. I didn't want to spend the time of my life trusting in something that, uh, after all, uh, we couldn't prove, we couldn't investigate, we, we couldn't verify. And so I met for the first time uh, an engineer, a uh, nodeman, that was a very wise person. And uh, he was the, the per first person here in Brazil who started studying uh, phenomena, spiritist phenomena. He was the person who brought the first news about uh, a phenomenon that was happening in Europe over the voices. Sonia practices a method called Instrumental Transcommunication, or ITC, to record voices and images from the afterlife using electronics such as a telephone, radio, computer, or video cameras. ITCs are considered a two-way communication with the spirit world. EVPs are electronic voice phenomena, and it's also called instrumental trance communication. And what they are is the people who are living unseen with us on this reality, or they're living in another realm and they're communicating with us. What they're doing is they're influencing electronic objects, they're influencing a video they're influencing a recording. What they're actually doing is they're not having a video of themselves where they are. What they're doing is they're influencing the recorder so that the recorder then records what they say. So that in an audio, what they're doing is they're laying down electronic tracks on the recorder, on the hard drive, whatever it is that we're using. So they're not really actually speaking in the sense of standing in front of a microphone. 
Instead, what they're doing is they are, through the influence of their thoughts, through the influence of their minds, they're influencing the electromagnetism that's on that recording device. There is nothing but consciousness. Consciousness is the only reality. So what we're really saying is that they're influencing the consciousness that is that recording device. And they can do that because of the fact that they have greater understanding of the way in which they can manipulate it. What Sonia Rinaldi does with her customized program is that she, she chops up the, the, the sounds from different individuals. I had a file of, let's say, a man 50 years old, a man 80 years old, a lady 40 years old, a young girl 20 years old. And by combining that, you'll, you'll actually see it. Um, it sounds very choppy. And she takes that sound and it allows the spirit to work through it and create voices from it. I say, I shall return to you. It's the same thing as trying to get EVP from uh, the sound of um, uh, seashells or from uh, running water. They'll take that sound from the air and then create voices from it. What it amounts to is that those who are working from the other side, who are working unseen, are trying to find ways of making the communications. And so they're experimenting with the, the different ways. So when we experiment by using a method, then they're experimenting on their side by seeing what they can do to manipulate it. So some of the ways are, for instance, using radios that are on that have static where there's no station. And water running is another way of doing it. And some people have used whale noises, the whale songs. And what happens is that those on the other side then are going to try to use that to communicate by changing the electromagnetism that's on the recording device. And for our next presenter is someone who is near and dear in my heart. And I never knew how profound something could be until I've witnessed the work of Sonia Rinaldi. Years ago, I attended a conference about the afterlife, and I heard stories about this woman in Brazil who was doing these extraordinary recordings. And I thought, someday, someday, I'd like to meet this woman. And for me to say that we have Sonia Rinaldi here from Brazil presenting to me the number one top reason to believe in the afterlife this weekend. It gives me great honor to introduce you to my friend and beautiful soul, Sonia Rinaldi. Instrumental transcommunication is how we call the communication between our plane of life and other planes of lives uh, via devices, through devices, electronic devices, okay? Mr. Armando, can you leave a message to your son, Carlos? So, it, it, as it is laid, as that recording is laid on the recording device, they then intervene and change that electromagnetism. It's much easier for them to use if they have some sort of a background. There are EVPs that people get when they just walk into a haunted house or something of that sort and they turn on a tape recorder and they, they get voices. Some of them you can hear and some of them are just garbled. Now the most effective way of doing that is by using a voice in the background and the voice can be either an actual voice or it can be a voice that's garbled up. It's, it's not really a voice, it's just syllables. And so they're cut up and then, and then they're played back in sequence. And they then are more able to lay down the electromagnetism on that. They use that sound to be able to make the voice. And if, especially if, if it's a child's voice that was garbled up, then it's more easier to get a child to come through in the recordings. Mommy, I can talk. ITC is not a new concept. It perhaps started with Thomas Edison. In theory, Edison aspired to create a spirit phone to contact the deceased, and his writings on the subject were censored and locked away. Based on the principle that matter cannot be destroyed, Edison believed that the essential beingness of a person might very likely survive the physical death of the body, and that this being could be contacted after death. This lost work was recently republished and revealed, as he had a pact with an engineer who he worked with. Whoever died first would contact the other from beyond the grave. 
In truth, he doesn't su succeed, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. Others also thought of the same matter, and slowly it went on uh, improving the communication. But in the year 1950, when electronics uh, started appearing on Earth, uh, was making more possible the communication with the other side. So they still depend on our technology to develop so that they can make the connection. Sonia's inspiration to work in the field of ITC comes from several scientists who experimented with electronic devices before her. Dennis Gabor, electrical engineer and physicist, most notable for inventing holograms, for which he later received the 1971 Nobel Prize in Physics. Father Roberto Landell was a Brazilian Roman Catholic priest and inventor. He is best known for his work developing long-distance audio transmissions using a variety of technology, including an improved megaphone device and radio signals. Constantine Raudova, a psychologist and professor who, under strict laboratory conditions, was able to record over 100,000 voices and authored several books on the subject of voices from the other side, which would later become known as electronic voice phenomena. And Nikola Tesla, inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist, best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electricity supply system. What I do is to offer voice or light or uh, uh, any material that they can manage and create images or, um, or voice, depending on what I'm doing. I say, I shall return to you. I love you. Yeah, you're doing great. More than half of this time, I just worked with voices. In truth, I didn't know exactly or never thought that I could ever uh, get images. Uh, until one day they, the other side they requested and um, as always it was a command let's say that I receive and then the first thing is to, to think oh my god how can I record video I didn't know anything about um, I didn't have a, a camera and then I start all the process and uh, created the situation and uh, followed the, the inspirations and uh, here we are You measured uh, one, one meter and a half of uh, bubble plastic for me, so that we can use in our test. Bubble plastic is something incredible, and uh, the reason is, in truth, that it is, as it is, it has uh, the bubbles. It makes a bit of a shadow, so the other side will have darks and clears for mixing and creating faces and so on. In sessions with those who are seeking contact, Sonia uses a provided photo and with the use of bubble wrap, vapor, water, smoke, static and or light, the images morph into a visibly different image. And or changing, for instance, my face into some other things that they will uh, change through uh, manipulating the light changing possibly the frequencies of the light into one to into another. This is called transfiguration, but in some instances, a photo was not even provided to Sonia, and grieving parents have found their loved one's image in Sonia's pictures of unknowns from her many experiments. Roseanne Norris, who is interested in Sonia's work, was stunned to see a photo of what looked like her son Lee in one of Sonia's publications. Uh, and obviously nobody had this picture and so it was impossible to be something f uh, f uh, like a fake. I'm Roseanne Norris and I live in Binghamton, New York. 
and my son Lee um, was 30 years old when he passed in January of 2018, along with his dog, Buddy, from an accidental carbon monoxide poisoning in his home. To have a chance, we to open our devices for them to reach us. February 2019, we I went to the We Don't Die conference in Boston, and that's where I was introduced to Sonia. And when I saw her presentation, I have to say at first, I thought it was a little out there. I didn't know how it felt to me. It seemed a little sci-fi-ish, but I thought I'm gonna have an open mind. Um, I did meet Sonia briefly, and we had a Brazil connection because my sister-in-law is from Brazil. She knew I didn't say anything about Lee, but also Lee had been to Brazil a number of times for business. So it was kind of that connection. Um, and then I, I let it go, you know, that was the extent of our conversation. And after Boston, Experiment 17 came out, and when I went to Experiment 17, the first image was my son. And it just hit me in the gut, it just took my breath away. And later I had a, a reading with Isabella Johnson, and at the end she said, do you have any questions? And I, I said, you know, I said, Is, was that really you in, that ex in, in Sonia's number 17? And, and he said, she said, he's saying, duh, mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was the funny, I have five children. He's the middle child and he was clearly, definitely the funniest one. He, uh, but he was a very deep person. He loved things uh, about space and time, and he was so interested. We used to lay out in the backyard and look at the stars together. Um, my other kids didn't have the patience for it. So he was very interested in that, and I just imagine him now. I know that he's just having the time of his life. Um, he has said as much in readings. Uh, He's exploring and learning and yeah. You know, would I have him back if I could? Absolutely. But to know he's that alive and safe and happy and free, that also brings me comfort. I created myself ways of receiving uh, images. And how was that? I discovered that to receive images we had to head light. Sonia had no knowledge of Lee at Boston. We only spoke of Brazil. I didn't tell her why it was there. Uh, she never saw a photo of Lee. She had no way of knowing. Then when he came through, he came through completely, I think because I was a little skeptical about her whole presentation. I wasn't sure how it sat with me. So I feel like he came through to say, yeah, it's real, Mom, and it's me. But as it is recorded, you can uh, see frame by frame later. Then We Don't Die Orlando happened the end of March. And so I never actually looked again at that EMAG until mid-April. And that's when I discovered Lee as the unknown. Close your eyes. Two, three. Okay. Yes. He was 30 when he passed, but he appeared about 11 or 12. And I could tell, I mean, he had a little bowl cut when he was young. So, um, and, and Sonia had said it, it was an image with like reddish or blonde hair. She couldn't really tell and he, had, he was a redhead. So, um, you know, I could definitely tell it was him. <sighs> Whoa, it just, just such joy, such proof that, yeah. It was an incredible feeling. It was still only a year out from his passing, so I was, you know, still still working, <laughs> still today, working every day on it. But um, yeah, it really propelled me down that, that road of healing. many mothers that we know that followed 
uh, the child with a cancer. Oh my God, it is three years, five years of a poor suffering. Whenever this child is free again, they are thankful for, uh, well, I get the emotion. Um, they are uh, free now and uh, the mothers also accomplished the task of supporting such a difficulty. So they are winners. Uh, she is not a poor, you know, poor person. No, she is great. She is incredible. And all this, I think, is registered in, for our return. These children is thankful. They are around. They try to say to parents, "I'm fine. Don't cry." Uh, the, uh, I see always the children say to the parents, "Don't cry. I'm well." My name is Tracy Chawcraft and uh, my 22-year-old son Josh passed away in May of 2018 from an accidental overdose. You can imagine the devastation with that. We didn't know what to do, how to do it, how to survive it, and uh, we found a Helping Parents Heal meeting in New York City and we went to that 19 days later and met wonderful people who were talking about the afterlife and communication and it was all foreign to us. We didn't even know what happened to you when you died. We didn't give much thought. So after that, um, I started researching what happens to you when you die, because I needed to know where was my child. And one of the people that I came across was Sonia Rinaldi, but I wasn't that interested in the images. I couldn't even tell what a lot of them were. But then seven months after he died, it was the day before his 23rd birthday, I was watching my friend Caroline's podcast with Sonia. I am Caroline Chang, your host. And she was showing images. And one of the images was the clearest I've ever seen her images. And it was Josh when he was younger. And uh, this was uh, an unknown boy. Uh, this young boy, with the, observe the color of his hair. It is a, a very particular red hair. When she was on my show, she was showing images of unknowns. I kept hearing of that she would get images of people she didn't know who they were. So she was sharing these images of these unknowns. And shortly after that show, I get a call from my dear friend Tracy. And Tracy said, when the first image that she saw was of Josh, her son. So I emailed Caroline and got Sonya's contact info sent her some comparisons, and she agreed it looked like Josh. Um, I was stunned when I saw that image, but it gave me such hope that he's, he's here. He's not gone, I will see him again. And Sonia explained that Josh's image was different from her other images because it came from nothing. She was uh, filming a blank computer screen, and when she looked at it, there was that, a boy on there, and that boy was Josh. It was the first time that happened to her. Prior to me seeing the image, she did not know I existed. It wasn't until I sent her comparison photos. Then we just exchanged a few emails and met in Boston. So yeah, she had no idea we existed. She had no idea who Josh was. There isn't even a picture of Josh that looks like that. So, but the, the cool thing about that is that the image came through completely unknown and Sonia had no images until I got them connected and she got images and she was able to verify that was her son. That provided such comfort to me. I mean, it's a picture, it's an image. <laughs> How do you deny that? So yeah, it really helped me get through each day. It's on my refrigerator where it will be until I go. <laughs> Where'd you go today? And what did Mickey Mouse do? <laughs> Josh was the youngest of five, so he was the classic baby. Um, we spoiled him and he lived up to that spoiled reputation. Um, he was a bit of a wild man. Um, he wasn't afraid to take risks and do things that a lot of people wouldn't do. But the number one thing that everybody says about Josh is how big his heart was. So that's what I remember.
So I believe how Josh came through as an unknown and Josh knew that I know his mom and I would have a show with Sonia. So Josh in spirit knew that, that I could connect the dots there. So I believe our, our you know, images that appear to her as unknown, I believe that that spirit knows some way there's going to be a connection to their loved one and Sonia. Caroline isn't only a conduit to help grieving mothers find Sonia Rinaldi and her work in ITC. She is also a recipient of images and EVPs via Sonia of her deceased son, Kyle. Kyle passed away after complications from open heart surgery. He was only 29 years old. Kyle came through with the first Mulligan experiment. See, because in Boston is when she got the, Scott Mulligan gave her four cameras, four um, projectors in Boston. So it was with her first Mulligan experiment where Kyle came through. In 2019, Sonia had an idea that might make her images clearer and more three-dimensional. With four video projectors, she would cast static and light into a plastic head-shaped bubble, allowing the other side to manipulate them and produce the images. Yes, I would have something um, like a 3D. The experiment was known as the Milligan Experiment, after Scott Milligan, a physical medium who was known worldwide. Scott gifted the four projectors to Sonia when they met at the We Don't Die conference in Boston in 2019. Mainly later I perceived that the format of the egg is quite useful because it holds the light inside. And uh, you can see, I think that this is a video, and you'll be able to see that inside creates a mess of light, the statics. You see, the, and the, some head is already being created here, as you can see, inside the egg, because they could manipulate the aesthetics inside, right? You can see the focus uh, of the walls of the egg in the plastic, the, those are strong light, but they could create things inside. In truth, it is a, a plastic format that for uh, producing chocolate eggs for Easter time. So this is the egg that I was using. And that time I was using it, it closed, uh, two halves. I was using this and uh, I was projecting some static in this and inside. Many times they could manage the static and create the images inside. Maybe the, the fact of these being closed, maybe it holds the energy and make it easier for them to manipulate and create the images. Experiment after experiment, Sonia was capturing images in the egg and connecting with people who identified their loved ones. My name's Pat McHenry. I'm from Long Island, New York. I lost my daughter, Melissa, be, um, four years, May 9th, 2016, suddenly. She had a heart condition. It was very sudden, and the grief has just been exhausting. These past almost four years, it'll be, and um, I did anything to find out about her. Like, I knew she wasn't gone. I the, 
Right after her funeral, I was in the library. I was pulling books off the shelves. I knew she was still with me. I felt her. I had a dream of her. Within a couple of days of her passing, she came to me. I um, feel her around me in my hair. I have visions of her. I knew she was that. I knew she was still here. Of course, things seemed to fall in my lap. I um, met a few different uh, people who um, were very spiritual. I went on Facebook, things appeared, Helping Parents Heal, um, Sherry Pearl, and then through, through Sherry, I uh, came across Sonia. And um, I knew I had to meet Sonia. I am putting on an event, my very first. I um, seen that on We Don't Die, which I was another thing I was drawn to on Sandra Champlain's uh, Facebook page. I seen that Sandra was going to have a conference in Boston and convinced my very skeptical husband to come with me. And we went and I met Sonia and I told her about EVPs, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with those electronic voice phenomena, which I've gotten from my daughter. I told her about them and she was so sweet, like, yes, yes. and. That was that, and then I got read by Philip Dykes. Um, me and my husband got read by him, and it was amazing, the reading. Um, and he told us that Melissa wanted to work with Sonia, and next thing I knew, Melissa was appearing for Sonia in her trans images, and it just completely blew me away. And as the medium in that reading, it was a true honor to have that experience of Melissa's perception of life and how she lived it. As the medium, we take on that role we become them. So when Melissa said that she wanted to work through Sonia, we know that when we hear urgently, very clearly, profound sound within the mind, then we know that it's evidential fact. We know that it is a truth, can't be changed. It's different from a thought. So she said that she wanted to work through Sonia. So my understanding of Sonia was all about seeing things within mist and images something I never really understood, but we have to trust that when somebody says they're going to do something, then exactly is how we perceive it. That's exactly how we present it. Okay, um, over here is her senior picture, um, her communion picture. My daughter's still doing things. She's letting people know that she's still around and we shouldn't fear death. And I'm like so amazed, but I'm, I'm a total believer. I know she's still with me, and I'm not gonna lie, it still sucks she's not physically here with me. But I know that she hasn't gone anywhere. She has let me know through signs that are amazing, amazing. I mean, I could be here for hours. So to tell you, and I, I, I can't thank Sonia enough she, uh, what was it, last May uh, 13th, she passed on the 9th, but it was the day after Mother's Day when she passed, but it fell on the 13th this year, it was a Monday, I was sitting right here on my couch and thinking about that time when she passed and saying to myself, oh my God, this is the time that it happened uh, three years ago. And I get an email, I hear my phone, and I get up and I look and there's an image of Melissa, a double image of her face right at the time she passed. And I, you don't know how my heart, I'm feeling it now, my heart lifted out of my chest. She was letting me know that she knew I was thinking about her at that moment. And Sonia had no idea. She had no idea about any of it. And it was relayed through Lisa, she sent it to me. And what a gift. Oh my God, like, and then bloom, I get up and I look and all of a sudden this comes through. And I was like, what? That's her. That's my daughter. But I don't even have a picture of anything like that. And that's my daughter. And neither did Sonia. And you could tell that's her. I mean, this kind of looks like a Girl Scout picture a little bit. The other one, I don't have, a, like, the photo that, that came through was not a photo that uh, I had ever shown to Sonia. And it, it's not even a photo I have, but I know it's my daughter. It's a double image of her, it's her face. It's completely a face. I mean, 
it's it's amazing like she's being serious and like laughing in the other picture which is it's her whole personality so i imagine the pain that patricia had suffered and um, to had the opportunity to bring melissa in many trans images smiling but with a beautiful smile and in different ages I feel so happy because uh, Patricia and some other mothers seems to be renewed with more courage to go on living. What's absolutely not easy after a, a huge loss like a, a son or a daughter. And Phil told me that um, Melissa had said this to her mum and then her mum had gone and sat with Sonia and the picture had arrived. It got us questioning about how could that be? What had taken place? Because we've known about pareidolia. Pareidolia is the art of seeing faces in lots of things. It can be the sky, it can be a carpet, it can be the tiles on the floor, or indeed the bark on a tree. But when there's evidence that we don't understand, that encouraged us to look a bit further. The science that backs up the uh, post-mortem consciousness survival is quantum electrodynamics. Now most people um, say quantum mechanics, and, and that's a, a misnomer because it's not mechanical. It makes it sound like it's physical, and it's non-physical. Quantum electrodynamics is a good way to describe it. That's the QED. That's what most physicists describe it as. And what is important here is that quantum electrodynamics, in order to precipitate matter from the potentialities that exist out there, we have the wave function, which is a potential, to precipitate that into matter requires what uh, John Newman calls process one, or it's a choice a choice of what it's going to be out of all the potential, you know, infinite potentiality, what it's going to be and it has to come down to be this piece of matter requires a choice. That choice has to be made by a living consciousness. And that consciousness has to exist outside of physics, outside of what we call space-time, outside of 3D plus time. It has to exist outside of that. Discards back in 1650 and in, in, uh, 350 years ago divided physics from metaphysics. Metaphysics means beyond physics, and most people think metaphysics means some kind of religion. No, it's what's beyond physics. Physics is all about the physical, and metaphysics is beyond that. And Descartes placed consciousness over there in metaphysics. Not going to look into it. So when people are trying to have a theory of everything, and they're talking in, in space-time in 3D, you, everything's not in there. It, all of metaphysics has been left out. And that's what we as people, we, we're thinking our science is always inside of physics. No, we have to take in the whole thing. If we're going to have a theory of everything, we have to have everything in it. And when you start taking in everything, you get over into consciousness. Consciousness exists outside the physical. Once you understand that, it makes all this very simple. Because if consciousness can exist outside the physical, that means consciousness doesn't need a physical body to express itself. Therefore, consciousness is eternal. It can be outside the body without a physical body. It can go on existing. So consciousness survival post-mortem is natural. So... Uh, what I thought of doing for you, you are the first group, so we are the first victims. <laughs> so, uh, let's just, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, lab mouse, uh, lab rat. Lab rat. Lab rat, lab rat. Uh, lab rat yes. Ah, okay, <laughs> thank you. So, you are the first one, so let's see what uh, we. <laughs> okay, so what I thought is the following. I. <laughs> 
Tesla calling me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What, oh, what, okay, I'll, I'll watch. Okay. So in 2019 in Orlando, I met uh, Sonia Rinaldi in person. And I was quite taken by not just her work, but her personality. She's the nicest woman, sweet salt of the earth. And to understand a little bit more about what she was doing, um, I was able to observe her presentation and she was doing a research uh, experiment. Look like a, a beak of a, a duck or something like that. Okay, now he's moving, it's changing. And I completely fell head over heels with her work of how she was able to notice faces and movement of faces. Oh, I think he's, he's changed it mm -hmm. already. Oh, yeah. And age regression. My first objective is to help the other side to do what they have to do because I think that this task of contacting Earth is in first place theirs and um, I think that obviously uh, as a result of this intention we finally also help people mainly moms that lost their sons but my first objective is to improve the, the communication with the other side. So uh, let's say that the help comes, um, but it's not the first, it's, it's the second objective. I think that uh, what I c have been cooperating to the other side is in improving the quality of the communication so that uh, later on, maybe I, I not I'm not even here anymore, but they will be able to produce much more than what they do today. They may um, access people in a larger way that they can do today. So my first objective is the research first and the help in second, but both has to be linked anyway. So there is no way to make the research without helping. So it goes together. Once people realize that we really don't die and that, you know, it's, it's not lights out when it comes time to pass, I think that it almost implores us to live a different way because, I mean, we are, we're all in it together. There's, there is no, you're not taking any of it with you, you know, that kind of a thing. And, and I think that it's incredible for helping the grieving process when you can actually you know, simply you're just really saying goodbye to the physical body of somebody. You can still have a relationship with that person, whether it's a spouse, a child, a parent. Um, and sometimes it can be a very substantive relationship. Um, I just think that it just, I think it changes everything. I really do. They need something to man manipulate here in real time so that we could see simultaneously while they are walking we can see the movement and they are extremely quick so that you all of a sudden you have the face all of a sudden uh, all of a sudden the, the change there is a change in the face and uh, then appear other face it, it is very quick for us for our eyes for our brain but it is all recorded my beauty you're supposed to be smiling supposed to be smiling because you just got a t-shirt. I do, I do. What is it? <laughs> Look, there's, we're like in a, the middle of the city. Here, should I put this on us too? I don't know how to do that in a video. Do you hear that sound? Look, oh, there she is again. Look at, look at, there's the city. Check it out. We're walking here. Okay. Okay, Kristen, we're enough. This is the city, but then look at you walk through these little gates right Do here. You hear <laughs> and now we're really right smack in the middle. Crazy, cray cray. When the early photos came, um, Sonia would send uh, an image to me and say, you know, does this, uh, this looks like amber to me. 
but she's only like eight years old. Do you, do you have anything? And I would find a picture that was almost identical to whatever it was that she sent. And it was, it was really, really uh, interesting experience because she'd never seen any of those before. So it was very convincing. Lisa, Lost Amber, look at these. Yeah, um, uh, Amber died at the age of 25. She gave me that little bit of hope that we all wanted and, um, and it was great to see it. And I think that most people that I've talked to, most moms go into it kind of skeptically because it's just, you know, who, who ever even heard of stuff like this before? Even though it's been out there, but who's, who, who's heard of it? We all kind of went in a little bit like, hmm, what's this all about? But what if, what if? And it was fantastic to see it but it could have been, you know, thank you very much for participating and, um, you know, good luck to you and moving on. But so many things have happened. I mean, she's appeared in so many different ways without my asking anything. I mean, just an email will appear and then sometimes months will go by and nothing will happen and I'll get an email from Sonia and she'll say, I think Amber's at it again. And she'll say, you know, what do you think? And I, I mean, the moment we look at them, with some of the, the photos and it, or the images, most especially though the, the younger ones because um, Amber was sick with an eating disorder for a very long time and so toward the end of her life she was really gaunt and you know thin. When she was younger though, when she was you know say 10, younger than 10, she was just you know she had like the pudgy cheeks and just um, some more form to her and she just had a a happiness about her that was really like a, just a natural smile. And it was just, you know, she just kind of was exuberant. As she got older and she struggled more, her smiles were more forced, um, you know, um, they just didn't look. So these images that she was sending that showed, and I said, why? Why do you think that, you know, why would she show that? And she said, because that's when she was happiest. We have been developing extremely, and uh, the quality of the trans images uh, is, is great. And uh, more and more lovely ones who pass they are appearing. Sonia has a tremendous desire, and, and she has her reasons for that, which she shared before, but she has reasons for really wanting to help um, parents who are suffering because she does believe that this is proof of the afterlife. I believe that this is proof of the afterlife. And she just feels that if she can bring some hope or some healing, um, but also she believes, and I believe, that the guides that are helping her on the other side trust her fully and that they are really planning to do a lot more and planning to give even more proof. So I think that something amazing in instrumental transcommunication is that every time, every day, is something new. And uh, I think that uh, when we think, well, everything has been seen, nothing will, new will happen, they come with something absolutely unexpected. Sonia's years of experimenting with images have involved various types of equipment setups. Her most recent apparatus is similar to the dome or plastic egg arrangement, also known as the Milligan experiment. But this setup incorporates the element of vapor. In theory, those in the spirit world should be able to manipulate the projected lights and static alongside a photo and produce a visibly different image. Images have been recorded that seem to show an individual looking in a different direction than in the photo or showing a different facial expression. Sometimes a new or unknown person in spirit will be discovered in the trans images. The vapor. Imagine, we have some thousand examples of uh, creations they do in the vapor. For instance, you have the vapor here. Obviously, it has no control at all. It is flowing and flowing. And in a certain moment, you see that, that, that 
vapor is under control of someone from somewhere and it got a form of a face, how? So it is, we cannot say that it's something normal because the vapor is here, there is nobody else around. And even there was someone around, how can one shape the vapor in a fraction of a second? I'm always skeptical. I'm always skeptical on some level. Um, I'm somebody with a finance background, a math background, so I always apply things um, to, to that and to, you know, statistically, you know, the odds of something actually being truthful. And I have had experiences that I just cannot attribute to anything other than it being some otherworldly event or, um, you know, afterlife phenomenon. Jan Rudd has always been curious about the possible ways to communicate with loved ones who have passed on, and was introduced to Sonia's work at a recent afterlife conference. Jan hopes to connect with her parents through an experiment and decided to book a session. Hi, Jan. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, perfectly. Jan, located in Florida, connects with Sonia in Brazil over a video conference. In this experiment, Sonia utilized her current setup using Vapor, where the recipient displays a photo of his or her loved one on the computer screen, and Sonia projects the photo into a cloud of vapor. Yeah, can you please come closer to the camera? Yes, a bit more. Sonia believes the combination of vapor which is rapidly moving and changing, and the projection of a photo gives the spirit world a canvas on which to form new trans images. Did you prepare the photos and uh, everything? Yes, I have everything. I have photos and I have the bubble wrap here. Wonderful. Let me just see how it is here. And uh, let's just start with uh, uh, talking a little, little bit and then we please show the, the photos, right? And, uh, but slowly, everything is slowly, okay? So that the other side has time to, to work. So let me just turn on the device. I did not know anything about uh, trans communication. I did not know anything about finding, you know, images on screens or I, nothing like that. I knew nothing like that. That was way beyond anything I had ever known about. Please, uh, let us start with your mom's, your mom's photo. Uh, okay, uh, turn it slowly. As Jan displays her first photo, which is of her mother, to the camera, Sonia records the images being projected in the stream of vapor, which emits from a single store-bought humidifier. I truly hope that something comes through for me. I so look for some kind of validation. But it is because of the fact that these capabilities are available now that were never available in humankind. But I don't think it's more just a coincidence. I think that what's going on is that humankind has been permitted to advance to this place because we are intended to have the veil disappear between our life and that life that will come after this life. And we're being given the capabilities at this time in our lives. And at the same time, the people who are able to do it, the people who are dedicated to doing it are rising. They're coming into the picture and they're making it happen at the same time the communication technologies are happening. So it's all a team effort and it's an effort by the universal intellect to advance us as a humankind during this period of time. There are some good ones um, ahead. Over the course of a month, Sonia meticulously reviews the captured video, frame by frame. Oh, look, there is a boy here. 
searching for the trans images made by Spirit. Her results are captured in her computer and, using photo editing software, she adds slight contrast to accentuate the images for easier viewing. Uh, you see a, a big difference when we open in the Photoshop. Now you see very well the leaps. By now, I think all they do is to transfer information showing that the life goes on. I think this is a very precious information, maybe more important than it may look in the first moment. Because I think that if we do understand that uh, uh, life goes on after death, everything will change. And maybe that is what they are waiting for us to to achieve a new, new view of life. And then, all of a sudden, look, this is the big lady, brunette. After saving the new trans images captured from the paused video frames, Sonia saves them as files. These files are collected and published into an electronic magazine, or EMAG, for distribution. Oh, look at the other face there. In truth, as I said, um, in the, this new technology, they are not able to send something. So we have to offer so that they change. So it may be sound or it may be light. Let me see, she sent something earlier today. So let me, see, let me get on to it. Oh boy, I'm like nervous. <laughs> so we did two, two sessions over Zoom. I wasn't entirely sure what was happening on the other end, but um, on my end, I was just sort of following her instructions and either holding up a photograph or we were talking a little bit and that was about it. Um, so when you requested a second session, which we had, and as a result, I got many, many, many images. And I'm talking about probably over 100 pages of images. Here's a picture of my mom going to her prom, okay, at this, about 15 years old. And here is the, the image that came through. And if you look at the face and just picture her tilting her head back a little bit, that looks like my mom. I mean, here's the picture I had. Here's my photograph of my mom that I was holding that day. And this came through and it is so clear and like totally different. What, what do I actually see in these images that I could say have absolutely nothing to do with my photographs or any possible conversation I had that day over the Zoom? So I looked obviously closer and, you know, the answer is yes, that there were images that I can say to you, I, I honestly don't know how this happened. I can tell you that the things that really were the hits in this were things that I don't think she was necessarily aware of, and they were things that only I knew from my own relationship with these people. is dedicated to recording and uh, it, it, because in truth it is a lot of work in truth because uh, the, the part of a recording is the smallest the the biggest part is to arrange everything so that I can publish uh, because I think that it is useless if you produce things and then you keep it to yourself so I feel I have to publish everything, so to have uh, all these available for people. And um, so it is, uh, let's say, I record in one day and then it takes me some uh, 15 days to produce the in magazine with the older results because it's a lot of images to see, uh, and lots of videos, sometimes lots of audios. So it is a huge work. and. I don't have to have free time because I think that um, by the opposite, 
I think life is so short and then we have to take every minute possible for doing this because you know whenever we expect we are in the other side back so it is good to to take the opportunity to use all the time to help people and uh, mainly to develop the technology because I usually say that uh, in truth I work for the other side not exactly for this side right so the idea is um, uh, that uh, I have to use my time to develop it as much as we can so that uh, whenever I go back home uh, things will be better for the other side, they will be more prepared. So my mom had a rare um, muscular dystrophy called Melis. It's really rare, there's only so many in the world. She kind of gone down a little bit of a decline in her health and then it was a tornado season night and um, I guess her intestines had got twisted up and she didn't know and uh, she had passed out and sadly they tried to take her to a small hospital in town but you know the sirens are going off for the tornadoes and stuff and so then they couldn't transport her to Oklahoma City where they needed to do surgery and so it was a couple hours later and they finally were able to transport her and uh, she went through surgery but she didn't make it. Beautiful Krista. <laughs> Let me find her. Okay, Krista, please uh, get your mom's fo photo. Okay. Please turn it. Using her vapor method, Sonia conducts yet another experiment with Krista My Collins of Oklahoma City, who hopes her mother will come forward through the images. I think that you and your mother were very connected, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. And she loved her children so much, and if there's any way she could come across and communicate, she would do it. She loved you so much. As Krista displays a paper print of her late mother, the photograph is visible in the vapor trails, rapidly moving and flickering in the foreground, providing a palette of light and mist for the spirit of her mother to work with. As Sonia imports the video from her cell phone into the computer, results are already appearing. Oh, look at the hair, beautiful hair. Um, see, there is, uh, the, the, the photo is very, is here, and look, it is very different. I, I think I was just in shock, I was just flabbergasted. So, because it was so weird, you know, here's the image of her on the picture, however, you know, she's up here, and how, how it could even make that image, how she could be there, you know, in the midst of fully formed face, that was crazy. The experiment resulted in over 600 captured still images that Sonia published in her e-magazine. Now I have so many files to see that I, I wonder how, you, uh, how I will survive. <laughs> so like, you know, you can see where the picture was, but then here she is over it. Like, how does that happen? She looked really healthy. And towards the end of her life, my, you know, my mother had a lot of health issues. And so she looked a little rough. And so it was nice to see her look younger and, and healthy. So I would say it is a miracle of technology that they achieved. So here again, here she is off to the side. And see how much healthier she looks? So I have a few, a few little pictures here. We can see how she has the really dark hair and her nose. Just look how like nice her skin looks. She just looks so much younger. And that's, I mean, that's definitely her there. Because here I would say she looks way younger than I am right now. It's just incredible. The point is um, up. 
until which point we deserve to to learn and to receive all these. So by now, I think all they do is to transfer information, showing that the life goes on. I think this is a very precious information. Maybe more important than it may look in the first moment. Because I think that if we do understand that uh, uh, life goes on after death, everything will change. And maybe that is what they are waiting for us to, to achieve a new, new view of life, less materialistic, with more friendship, sharing more whatever we have, either knowledge, either wealth. So I think that uh, this is a help anyway. <laughs> While Sonia continues to work in her lab, her goal is to improve on the communication between the living and the deceased, to bring comfort to all, knowing that life does continue beyond physical death. I feel blessed to have met this wonderful, humble woman uh, who never asked for money. If you try to give her money, she won't take it. She spent 30 years plus of her life doing research on the afterlife and uh, connecting with the other side. And she did this out of an act of service to help others with their grief. The, I just want to, I don't know, I'm looking for this. How can I talk about a woman that is menial, just basic, but is able to accomplish something that is so advanced she has nothing to really gain from this, but to help people realize that we're here for a short time and we're to live our best life and to show that our loved ones are encouraging us. It's helping us heal, to remove that grief so we can live in, from a place of joy until we, we are reunited with them. I'm honored and so grateful for everything she does. She does it from her heart and I'm just honored to call her a dear friend of mine now. My daughter had a very, very big personality, and she still does have a really big personality. She is still shining, and Sonia's helped me so much. Like, she's my earth angel. That's what I call her. Me and Sonia, I, I just love her. Love her. She's really a giving woman. She just wants to help people, and I can't thank her enough. I loved her. <laughs> her personality is a little quirky and she kind of just will say like it is and I, I absolutely love it and you just feel like a confidence in her and that she knows what she's doing and you know that she has so much love for everyone. I really felt that. Once we know, not just grieving parents, but once we know that the afterlife is real and that we're all going to be there someday, you know, our loved ones are still living. That are, the only thing that's gone is just their physical body. But everything about them, in fact, some people, like my daughter, is more whole now than she was when she passed, you know, or the, for the decade before she passed. She is a, a whole, happy, she's back to work, she's working hard, and once we know that, I mean, how can we live the same way? How can other people, even people who aren't um, grieving, how can they live the same way when they know it's not lights out? ITC can help mankind to give some solid evidences of immortality. And I think that this can be very helpful, not only for those who suffer, who suffer for a loss, but also for those who are skeptic and uh, will discover a new world a new perspective of life um, to discover mainly that uh, life goes on. So I think that instrumental transcommunication, transcommunication is the tool for achieving this and I trust 
that this will help the people. Thank you, Sonia, for the joy, awe, reverence, and wonder you have given to so many around the world by sharing your ITC expertise. You always give credit to the spirits rather than yourself, as you were so humbled by each divine experience. Sonia, thank you for your beautiful work. I am blessed to have met you a few years back and witnessed your extraordinary contribution. You have dedicated years and years of your life to bringing in such important information, validating information. And I know it's brought comfort to many and I believe in the years ahead, your work will stand out and continue to contribute in the most extraordinary ways. Bless you and thank you. Sonia has been an incredible mentor and friend to me for the last two years as I've developed my own ITC experimentation. And I'm here to tell you that as extraordinary as her work is, her heart is actually the most extraordinary thing about her. I have never experienced a person who is as loving, supportive, caring, and genuinely interested in bettering humanity than Sonia Rinaldi. Thank you, Sonia. You've got a friend for life and beyond in me. I just uh, want to thank you, Sonia, for all the good work you're doing. It is amazing how you are bringing the two worlds together, and I'm looking forward to 2022 to see what it will achieve. I am so grateful for the thoughtfulness and appreciation you give to your patrons and volunteers, and I'm sure I speak for all. To hear your kid's voice from the afterlife is remarkable. It's such a wonderful feeling. Um, I can't really describe it. Thank you for all the work that you do, Sonia, and uh, just continue on. Hi, Sonia. Thank you so much for all your hard work and your dedicated research. We both love you very much, me and Nils. Take care and thank you for all your love. Thank you for all you do. I just wanted to thank you and our spirit friends for letting be, us be part of this wonderful experiment and for bringing my husband back to me and confirming our trans-dimensional marriage. Thank you from both of us. When Ken died six years ago, I desperately craved some sort of assurance, like real reassurance that, that Ken still existed and was still with me. I desperately sought it. And finally, through Sonia Rinaldi and her amazing blessed work, I found it. I've had that blessed reassurance. And it has healed me in ways that I thought were impossible. And all I can say is thank you, Sonia, for your amazing work and your kindness in doing the work that you do. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to thank Sonia for all the work she does. Muito obrigada, Sonia por todo lo que vos se faz. Muchas gracias. Es un enorme placer. And I want to thank you for being right behind, right behind me. You have taught me how to not only see the light, but also where to turn the switch. And that's, um, that's something that not a lot of people have. And I wanted to thank you for that. Thank you for 35 years of service to all these mothers, wives, uh, people that they have been trying to contact with their loved ones up there and through you we've been able to do it. We love you. Thank you. Saying a huge, huge thank you from here for all the phenomenal work you're doing. We are all so very grateful and keep going. Obrigada. Ciao. Sonia, what an honor to have met you. Thank you so much for all your hard work and dedication working with spirit and trans imaging, proving to the world that we do not die. We do live on in afterlife. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the trans imaging that you provided my son, Dimitri. What a gift beyond anything I could have ever asked for. Thank you. You are a godsend. Sonia, you've become such a dear and precious friend to me over these years. And 
Amber and I are going to continue working beside you as long as you'll have us. You are the epitome of service. You never say no to anyone. You work tirelessly. You get more done in a week than most people get done in a month, most people half your age. You never say no. It doesn't matter if you're tired, if you're sick. You're always telling me that your job is to work with those on the other side and to help them out to get their messages to us. And I just love you. You are amazing. Sonia's tireless efforts to learn how to communicate more effectively with people living in the life after this life have moved humankind forward in our ability to communicate. She was chosen for this work. Thank you, Sonia. On behalf of a humanity that is benefiting immeasurably from your successful accomplishments. Dearest Sonia, over 30 years ago, you undertook a quest to find answers about the afterlife. Over the years, with dedication and determination, you have moved many from hope to belief to knowing that life continues after bodily death and our loved ones are always with us. I am forever grateful to be one of those who know because of you. Much love and God bless. For Marla, I'm making a snow angel for you because you are an angel. <laughs> okay.